Hey, good people, Mark Holmes here, and as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Um, I'm about to go out and do some work and stuff, and I was uploading my morning video, and I came across this clip here from the Detroit Lions, because I was talking about whether or not the Cowboys should move on from Dak Prescott. And this is the GM from the Lions, okay, the Lions who you know, made it to the NFC championship game. And, you know, apparently the lions have done more right, even though they were Oh, and 16 at one point than the Cowboys have. They've actually went through and did some things, but I was listening to this interview from the GM because the fans wanted, and this is actually pretty cool because the fans wanted the team to, to move on from Jared golf. They wanted I get rid of Jared golf, man. He's a bum. And instead of drafting, a quarterback, they ended up drafting Penny Sewell. Penny Sewell helped the running game and so on. And the thing that we always seem to look at is it's real easy to get focused in on the quarterback or one position as opposed to the things that really mean the most. But listen to this for a second because this is actually, actually gives me some hope because of the way they described how they ended up building this team. It wasn't that they ended up trading away and getting all these tons of picks and stuff. Listen to it. When you look back at those picks, and those picks were not welcomed by many in this room. You know, Dave, you want us to pick quarterback. You didn't want us to pick Panay Sewell. You know, people didn't want us to wait till the fourth round to draft a wide receiver. People didn't want to wait on a... Derek Barnes to develop, but every single move was intentional and was made with intention. You know, back in 2021, we did not have multiple ones. We did not have multiple twos. We did not have four picks in the first 100, you know, now we did have that and we used those wisely. You guys didn't agree, but we use those picks wisely, but we didn't have, we had one extra pick in 2021. We had a comp third. That was Ify Melifonu. Carlos, I know you said that that was a miss, but that was the only extra. <laughs> that was the only extra pick. So what I'm saying is, that's not required to sustain what we built going forward. So, um, how does it make you feel when you make a decision that isn't well received by everybody, but still standing on your two toes and going forward? I mean, just making by everybody or you included? No, I mean just anybody. I ain't really have it. <laughs> I, I ain't say too much today and deal with they do. So. <laughs> but just going forward and picking those. So my only thing is. That's not a criticism. I'm just saying. I mean, it seems like you're enjoying it a little bit. No, it, no. It's, uh, I'll, I'll say this. I'm big on accountability, you know. And um, I think you all would expect me to be accountable when I'm up here. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when things don't go right, you would expect me to be accountable. And I am. I, I feel I'm a very accountable person. I think um, when you heard so much negativity about our draft, and then when I said, look, wait till they start playing football, it'll be appreciative. When they started playing football and people started giving them credit, the negativity kind of just, everybody forgot about it. Nobody, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, give, I give probably two people credit in this room that said, you know what? I was wrong. I was wrong. And I and I appreciate that. And I respected that. But just the other about, you know, you knew they were wrong. And then they, oh, man, these rookies are playing so well. Or you hear the, man, many people thought, many people gave them backlash. Or, oh, man, there were some people that, no, it wasn't many. It was, it was you. You, like, I'm reading it like, no, you gave them backlash. And so just having accountability, that, that, that's, that, that, that's all it is. But, again, like I said, I'm not here to I told you so. Again, I told you so was when we selected the players. Um, you just got to get through the post-draft wave. There you go. That's kind of an interesting take there that sometimes I, I think Jerry Jones is more focused in on making the moves that appease the masses, the wide receivers in the first rounds and, and things, the edge rushers, the guys that make the big splash. But in the end, sometimes the moves that you make are not the popular ones. They looked, they said, Jared Goff's a bum. 
Jared Goff stinks. The the fans wanted to get rid of that guy. Instead, they fixed the offensive line. They got a running game that is really good, and you see the results of it. And I want to do one other thing here is because I th- as much as we look at this, and this is where Jimmy Johnson basically puts out put out the roadmap of what they did. The Cowboys, it wasn't, yes, Troy Aikman was the number one pick in the draft. But not everybody in there was a number one pick, a second round pick and stuff like that. And especially their offensive line. Just listen to Jimmy Johnson in his own words, how they built that team. You're up and then James Harris. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, let me first say congratulations on getting into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Watching that live on television, that raw emotion was just beautiful. Um, I have so many questions for you. I think about the only way I could get them in is to get a cooler beer and head out on <laughs> and go fishing with you. <laughs> right, Mark. But um, leaving the University of Miami and coming to the Dallas Cowboys, and at that time they were basically broke, busted, and fur- thoroughly disgusting to watch. Having gone from the pinnacle down to the depths, what was that like? And the second part of this question would be, I uh, played football at JMU with Charles Haley and knowing the character that he is and all the personalities that you had with the Cowboys, how were you able to mold them and keep them focused on the grand prize, which was winning? Well, you know, first of all, you know, you know, people look back on it and, and they say it was an easy decision to leave the University of Miami. You know, but, you know, we had gone through four straight seasons where we played a national schedule and been on national television every other week and only lost two regular season games. And so we had a powerhouse football team and I knew it was going to continue that way because we had a great, you know, group of talent. And then going to Dallas, you know, Tom Landry is one of the greatest coaches of all time, mm-hmm. you know, but you know, they had had three straight losing seasons. They are at the bottom of the NFL at three and 13 because they just didn't have any talent. And, you know, and obviously there were some older players that uh, helped us, uh, you know, in winning our Super Bowls. But a lot of it had to do with, you know, I, I brought in Tony Wise, my offensive line coach. And he he put together what is considered one of the greatest offensive lines in, in NFL history. But he did it with a, a free agent defensive tackle, Mark Tuane at left tackle. He did it with a left guard where the previous stats, staff said get rid of him because he was too fat, Nate Newton. <laughs> we took a, a third-round pick, a 245-pound offensive guard. I asked Tony, I said, can you convert him to a center? He said, I'll make him into a center. So we moved St- uh, Stepnoski to center. And then we took a seventh-round pick, Kevin Gogan, uh, who had struggled his early years. We moved him to guard and took a third-round pick, Eric Williams, at right tackle. So, you know, those players hadn't developed, but Tony Wise was able to develop them into a great offensive line. And so, you know, the combination of having some great assistant coaches and acquiring a lot of talent with 51 trades in five years, we were able to win that Super Bowl. So it was a great feeling. Thank you very much on that. I'll follow up about Charles Haley. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> he's a character. He, he is a character, character but he league. is one of my favorites. Uh, uh, you know, Charles and I developed a great relationship after a few uh, rocky roads uh, there early in his career at Dallas. Uh, we had a couple of run-ins, but we, we really got together. You know, really, he came into my office after I had berated him a, a couple of times at, at one of the ball games, and he said, Coach, he said, if you will just – get on to me one-on-one in your office. He said, I'll do anything in the world for you. I I love playing for you. He said, but just don't embarrass me in front of the other players. And I said, you know, Charles, I I may not always be able to do that, but I'll try. But from that time forward, we had a great relationship and he was a big part of us winning Super Bowls. Thank you very much. And how about them Cowboys? (laughs) I should have trademarked that. (laughs) James Harris. There you go. So, it's not always number one picks. It's not always guys that you ended up having. It's the, if there's anything to take away from here, it's that forget about trying to make the splash and appease the masses. 
The Lions, it was intentional. We had a plan. With Jerry and with um, with the Cowboys back with Jimmy Johnson, it was having talented coaches that were able to take the players and get the most out of them. Eric Williams, late round draft pick. That these guys were raw, but they were able to teach them. You got to have the talent, but then you've got to have somebody who knows how to do it. You know, you can have the best ingredients in the world to make a meal, but if nobody knows how to put those ingredients together, you got a pile of shit. It's that chef that's got that experience to know, I need a little bit of salt here. I need a little oregano over there that combines all of those things to get there. That's what Jimmy Johnson did. That's what the Lions are developing. They are going for substance as opposed to sizzle. Penny Sewell upgrading the offensive line is huge. It's huge. Your offensive line, it's not sexy. It's not going to sell jerseys, but it helps the running game, helps the quarterback, helps to control the tempo of the game. Take some lessons from here, guys. The offensive line is key. The running game is key to make the quarterback better. Because now we got people that are saying, well, we should have got Jared Goff. Well, Jared Goff is now surrounded by talent. Jared Goff, I've never said, is an awful quarterback. When he was playing with the Rams, he was surrounded by talent. When he went to the Lions and he wasn't, didn't look too good, did he? But now that he's got a Penny Sewell up there, he looks a lot better, more palatable. And it's easier to get those other guys than it is to get the quarterback. It's going to cost you. So would the Lions be in better shape if they went for a quarterback instead of Penny Sewell? I don't think so. And that's where we are right here. This is the reverse of maybe the Cowboys need to move on. This would be the pro of saying he should stay and look and learn from these guys. All right, good people. I got some work to do today. I hope y'all are having a good one. And we're just trying to, I want you to understand, it's my objective to make you think on all sides of an equation. You want to get as much information as you can whenever you have to make a major decision. And the Cowboys, they've got a lot of decisions to make. And just like the Lions here, we're at a crossroads. Do we draft a quarterback or do we go for an offensive lineman? This is a crossroads that the Dallas Cowboys are at right now. And they need to make a decision. As always, I appreciate you guys.